Hello! This is Yee Bagoon. Welcome to my video series on triggers for Age of Mythology scenario editing skills. In this episode, which is the first episode, I'll be going over some very basic stuff. So if you're intermediate in the editor or an expert, you may want to skip ahead. The aim for this session is to teach people who have zero experience of triggers what a trigger is, how to add triggers to your game, and then possibly touching on some common errors with triggers that you may experience during your time. So, to start off with, we need to go into the scenario editor. So, what is a trigger? Very simply, think of it as a statement where if a certain condition is met, then an effect plays out. To start off with, you can go up to this icon here to open the trigger editor, in your scenario and you'll be greeted with this interface here. To start adding triggers we press insert and you'll note that a new trigger has come up. Also there is text in the condition bar and in the effects bar over here. We can have a look at these in more detail by clicking on the conditions and effect bullet points on this left hand side here. So to start off with on this bar there's a few things to run through. There are three checkboxes and a priority slider. So active, first of all, you can see this is checked by default. So this means your trigger will run. If I uncheck this by clicking on it, it means the trigger will not run. This is useful if you want your trigger to only run after a certain event. So if you're developing a sequence of events. The effect that does this is known as fire event. And if you link triggers using fire event, active is automatically unchecked. Loop does what it says on the tin, so without this being checked, your trigger runs just once. When it is checked, every time the condition is met, the trigger will continually fire. The final one is run immediately. This means that the trigger will run before the very first frame of the game, so you'd usually only want this for your starting triggers if you're going to set some technologies active or launch a cinematic mode. Underneath we have a priority slider. Default, it's set at normal. The vast majority of your time you want your triggers to be high priority, and I can show you why in a moment. Now we can actually get on to building the trigger. So for conditions, at the moment we've got always selected. I'm just going to leave it at that for this part. Then we go to effects, and this is what we want to happen when our trigger works. So if you click this drop down box here, you'll see there's a huge variety of effects and that's what makes the Asian mythology editor so powerful. I'm going to start off with something really basic. So I'm going to go for grant a god power to player one. And again, you've got quite a long list of god powers, some of which aren't available in the Asian mythology you'll be used to, such as the volcano god power. So to start off with, if I'd have just created this, the priority would be normal. I'm going to go into playtest my scenario and we'll see what happens. Now, it appears like this hasn't worked, but eventually after a few seconds delay, the volcano power does show up and that's the importance of the priority. You can see if I set it to high priority and playtest the scenario, there is no delay. The volcano god power is instantly there. If we want to add some conditions to this, again, make sure priority is high. The most simple condition is a timer. So for example, two seconds. And once again, after two seconds, the condition is met. The god power volcano is granted as the effect and then the trigger ends. If we loop this trigger, what you'll find is that after two seconds, we get a volcano god power. After another two seconds, we get another and so on and so forth. So at the eight second mark, I've now got four counts of the Volcano God power. That loop would completely run unless it's told to stop or there are any other external influences on this. So there we go, that's a really basic trigger setup. You might have seen, I've got a few more conditions and effects here than you might have. This is because I've written some of my own triggers and I've also subscribed some triggers created by the community. The easiest way to do this is of course to look at the workshop for the extended edition and search for advanced triggers. This is made by Nottod who's one of our triggering geniuses. 
if you simply subscribe to this, then all his extra triggers will be in your game, and that's the simplest way to do it. If you want to manually insert triggers or look at the code, then you're going to need to look in the folder where Steam has installed and look for Age of Mythology. Once there, you'll find two files. One is trig temp. This is quite useful later on as that outputs all the triggers that you have in your scenario into excess code. The one we're interested in is called type test. And as you open this up, it will look something like this. If you had a condition and you wanted to insert it, you would put it in the conditions tab, making sure it's separate from everything else. If you scroll down, eventually you'll get to the effects lines. If you were to add it in here, it wouldn't work because this is the effects line. So this is where you add new effects that you might want to put in. This file here is the trig temp file, also found in the trigger2 folder. So this writes, as I've said before, your entire trigger code in XS format. And you can see this is rather simple. We've got the name of our trigger, we've got the condition here, which is a two second timer, and then we've got our Grant Volcano God Power Player 1 1 use. All this extra code here is added in by the game, so this just means that we disable our trigger after it's being used. Returning to the editor, our trigger is still there, so if we play test the scenario, we're able to use and invoke the trigger. So first time I did it, it was a new god power and it was absolutely fantastic and I loved it. However, if we do it on this map, after 11 seconds, we'll be set defeated. Why is this the case? Because when you start a new map, it follows supremacy rules. So I have no active units on this map, therefore I will be triggered defeated. You can disable this if you go to scenario tab, scenario data, and then uncheck this box here to use victory conditions. This now means that victory conditions aren't applied so we can test our god powers in peace without being set defeated or having another player set victory. This does mean that when we want a player to be defeated or victorious we'll need to trigger this ourselves but it's quite a simple thing to do. You can see we're already at 15 seconds and we've seen full the power there. Next I want to briefly talk about errors. So I've made a slight change to this trigger, so now when I playtest the scenario you'll find that nothing will happen at all. We're left with this blank map and it's just going to run without any triggers. This means a trigger lock has occurred and it means I've made a mistake which will prevent all of my triggers from working, usually from an invalid character. So if we look, what I've done here is I've done player one which is an invalid field for this. Commonly invalid characters such as the ones I'm typing in can all mess with the triggers and cause a trigger lock if they are not used in the correct format. By removing these invalid characters the trigger is now working. This is why I was showing you the trig temp file earlier on as when you have quite a lot of triggers it's really difficult to go through them when you get a trigger lock. What you can do is try deleting half of them, seeing if that's locks, and then you gradually work out where the trigger lies and you can narrow things down until you find the culprit. This leads me to organisation, which is the last thing to talk about. You'll see you can rename your triggers and this is quite helpful if you want to find out what they're doing when you come back to this scenario. There's also the ability to create trigger groups. This can be done by going under the triggers tab and selecting the group editor. So I've just got the one trigger grant power in the ungroup tab. I could move it over to the grant powers tab. And now when I look ungrouped, nothing. I can just create more triggers. Grant god power, I've got my power there. You can also copy triggers and it will maintain everything and create a perfect copy. This is really helpful if you've got a large map and want similar conditions to what you've had before. That's it for now. I hope that explains comprehensively the very basics of triggers and some errors in 10 minutes or less. I'd encourage you to go into the editor and experiment with this yourself before we move on to the next video.